My name is Brad Huddleston. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate the ground state energy of a particular atom using VASP. I'll give you a short intro on VASP and then go through each of the input files that VASP requires. The POTCAR, POSCAR, INCAR, and KPOINTS files. VASP, or Vienna Ab Initio Simulation Package, is a commercial density functional theory code. It's available here at this website. Density functional theory, or DFT, is a way of solving the Schrodinger's equation under several assumptions so that we can calculate properties at the electronic scale. You can find more information about VASP and DFT type codes on this website here, icme.hpc.msstate.edu. This has a lot of information related to all sorts of length scales, as you can see here everything from electronic scale and up. We're going to look at the electronic scale because we're interested in DFT. And you can see here there's an overview on what electronic scale codes are, specifically density functional theory. And then there's also some tutorials on VASP. And if you scroll down to material models, you can see VASP, and here's a link to their website again. Here you can find more uh, tutorials for running VASP, as well as a workflow diagram. So here you can see the four input files that VASP requires. The INCAR file, which is the control file if you will, essentially it controls the type of calculation you're running with VASP, whether it's a relaxation or single self-consistent calculation or whatnot. Uh, there's a POSCAR file, which controls the positions of the atoms. There's a KPOINTS file, which controls the uh, solution grid, which we'll get to more. And then there's the POTCAR file, which defines the pseudo-potential for the atom that you're using. So it essentially defines the material. For the output, it creates a, a, actually a large number of output files. We're mostly going to be focusing on this OSICAR file, and you can look in the documentation for what is stored in each of these other files. So let's take a look at some of these files then. First, the POTCAR file. You will actually get this POTCAR file from your VASP distribution. It should be it should be included in your distribution. You should have one. Uh, there should be several different kinds of uh, potentials, in fact, um, and there should be uh, potentials for nearly every atom in the periodic table. You can see here we're using a PA PBE potential for copper. And you can see there's lots of lots of uh, parameters and then there's a large number of numbers. And they're all defining the, the way that the atom will behave, um, defining the wave functions and, and such like that. So you'll need that file for the atom that you're planning on, on doing. The next file, the POSCAR file, defines the atomic positions and the uh, atomic cell that you're using. So this first line is just a comment, so you can use it to describe the system that your, your POSCAR is, is setting up. Here we're going to use an FCC system for copper. This next line is the lattice parameter. So copper's lattice parameter is 3.61, so I put that there. These next three lines define the lattice vectors for the system. You can see we're using non-orthogonal vectors, uh, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0. These actually help us define a primary FCC cell so that we can define the system using only one atom. Uh, to note that these lattice vectors are multiplied by the lattice parameter so that they repeat the cell and with periodic boundary conditions, they repeat the cell in the direction of each of these lattice vectors. This next line is refers to the number of atoms in the system. In this case, as I mentioned, we only have one atom, so we just put a one. This next line can be either Cartesian or direct. Cartesian essentially means that you're going to specify the 
uh, atom coordinates in an XYZ system. Uh, another thing to note is that each of these coordinates are still multiplied by the lattice parameter when you're doing them in Cartesian uh, coordinates. The other option, direct, will actually uh, assume that these coordinates are given in terms of these lattice vectors. So, in other words, this first coordinate uh, component is multiplied by the first lattice vector, and the second component is multiplied by the second lattice vector, etc. Now, we are only using a single atom at the origin, so in either case, the, the result would be the same, but if you have a more complicated system, then you know, one may be easier than the other. And that's the POSCAR file. Next, let's take a look at the INCAR file. Again, the first line of the INCAR file is just a comment line that you can use to describe the system that you're doing. This, and then after that, you can have a list of uh, parameter and value uh, pairs. And you can look in the VASP documentation for all the parameters that you can set in this file. We're just going to set a few of them here. Um, we're going to set uh, this precision, prec, equal to normal. Um, the normal precision will allow the simulation to run faster, but if you're trying to come up with a, a converged energy, then you'll want to set this precision to high. I-spin is related to the magnetism of the system. So copper is not magnetic, so we can set I-spin equal to 1. But if we were doing a magnetic metal, nickel or, or iron, then we would want to set that I-spin equal to 2. This next line, I smear, is related to the type of smearing that we're using. Negative 5 corresponds to a tetragonal smearing, which should work fine for our case. These next two lines refer to whether the whether VASP will write and save the charge and wave information. We don't actually need that information, so we're going to set both of those to false. There, like I said, there are many other tags that we could set, um, but they all have defaults and the other ones uh, we're just we're comfortable using the default values so there are the uh, that's the NCAR file now for the final 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 file uh, is the K points file again the first line is just a comment so that you can describe the file this next line actually refers to the number of K points that you want it to create we would rather have it generate them automatically, so we set this to zero, and then it won't. It'll just generate it according to whatever kind of k-point grid we tell it to create. Which brings us to this next line, which actually tells it what type of k-point grid that it should generate. Um, in this case, we're going to use a, a gamma grid uh, because that goes with the tetragonal smearing that we've chosen before. On this next line, we give it the density of k-points in each direction. For a equiaxial cell like we have here, uh, you want to keep these um, equiaxed. In other words, we want all these numbers to be the same. The other thing to note is that when you're trying to get a converged answer, you'll want to uh, make sure that it's converged with respect to this k-point density. So you can keep increasing these k-point numbers until you have until you reach a converged energy. This next line is related to the offset for the k-points. Um, we don't typically need that, so you can just leave those at zeros, typically. Alright, so now we've covered each of the four input files, and you can see that I have the VASP executable and the four input files all in one folder. And, if you look here, on the command line, I am, I, I am in that folder as well. So now, all I have to do is run VASP. I'm also going to direct the output into a file so that we can look at it easily. Now this could take a few minutes, or it could take a few hours, depending on uh, several things. Depending on your k-point density, and depending on your whether you've set precision to normal or high, and also depending on the number of atoms you have in your system. Uh, DFT does not scale very well with the number of atoms, so if you have um, a few or a few dozen atoms, then it could take a very long time. For our system, we only have one atom, and we have precision equals normal, and we have a fairly low number of k-points. 
So this should run pretty quickly. And there, now we see it's done. So if we refresh this, we can see all the output files that I mentioned before from the workflow diagram. If we look at this, we can see the standard out that VASP created. We can see it gives information about the kind of run, and then it goes through these iterations where it's converging on the uh, final energy, which you can see here. But all this is coming from the standard out. You can also find this information in an, an actual output file, um, which is the Ozicar file. And here again, you can see the iterations and the converged answer. So this is actually your answer that you're looking for here. Um, the ground state energy of copper, negative 3.719 uh, electron volts. And there you have it.